Well, hello, all my lovely monitorites. Today, we are going to have a very good day. We are going to debunk a good friend of mine named Matthew Larkins, who insists that everybody who doesn't listen to him is dumb on this topic. And we're going to show Matthew what the actual facts are. Now, let's be honest here. Matthew and I have been debating back and forth for many years. He's seen all of these interviews. He's seen all of the facts that I've posted, but he still, to this day, insists on trying to censor as much of what I'm going to show you today as possible. And he does this on purpose. Just to try to form some kind of cult following. I, I, something I really don't understand. Why build a following based on falsified information? Doesn't that mean that your entire following isn't legitimate? Don't you want to be honest with everything possible? And if you're wrong on anything, doesn't that mean that anybody who subscribe to you based on a falsified information that you put out doesn't make that legitimate i'm pretty sure it does anyway let's move on here now matthew insists that some clowns want to be dumb i had to make this and explain to him why and he's talking directly to me of course because you know we had a little bit of a spat yesterday but that's besides the point so let's just dive into all of the reasons that matthew is wrong on pretty much everything that he posted today he says that Mandrak is not above stories and that he's just an archetype of the stories of heroes and villains. Now, Matthew wants you to believe him and not the actual content creator author who wrote the comic book and also the guidebook. We're going to dive into that right now. So Matthew says that Mandrak is not above all of the stories. Let's see if that's true or not. Here's an interview between IGN Comics and Grant Morrison, where Grant explains all the differences between love stories and pivotal character roles in Final Crisis, such as Superman and Lois, Ouija and Nyx Yotan, Mandrakt and Zilla Vala, and Dinah and Ollie. So he goes through all of these names, explaining the love attractions between all of them, until he gets to the very last sentence where he says, They show what happens when the page starts to fancy the ink. Now that reference is to Mandrak and Zelo Vala. Mandrak is part of the Overvoid, which Grant Morrison explains in other interviews, is the comic book pages, and all of the pages combined that stories and narratives are printed on. So here we have Matthew insisting, that Mandrak is not above all of these stories, despite him literally diving down into the comic book ink narrative itself. So who are we going to believe? Are we going to believe Matthew? Or are we going to believe the content creator? Of course we believe the content creator. Matthew is just out here to try to censor all of this information in hopes of other people listening to him that don't like this story. Now, if we jump over to the guidebook, the Multiversity Guidebook, we find out that Dax Novu was infected by the endless play of narratives inside of the flaw. He dives down into the narratives of the flaw of existence. Now, wait a second. Matthew just told us that Mandrek is part of those narratives. So, if the guidebook and the author both tell us that Mandrek was sent by the Overvoid to investigate all narratives and all story and duality and data points. And all of this is what infected Mandrek. Then how can Matthew be right? Well, of course, Matthew isn't right. And he's only trying to invert all of this information to anybody willing to listen. Please don't listen to him. The next point he brings up is that Lucifer is much stronger and more prominent than Mandrake. Well, once more, let's go to IGN Comics and Grant Morrison's interview, where Grant details different types of evil. He details the evil of Darkseid and his apocalyptic type of evil. He also details the biblical evil that spreads itself through whole cultures and brings them to their knees, which is a reference to the icon of biblical evil, none other than Lucifer himself. So right now, Grant Morrison is detailing Darkseid and the difference between him and Lucifer. And then he goes on to say, and then there's Mandrake, who is actually the ultimate evil where there's no hope. 
he has differentiated the three biggest tiers of evil characters in DC Comics. Darkseid, Lucifer, and Mandrake, saying that Mandrake was specifically written to be above Lucifer. So once more, we have Matthew trying to invert as much information as possible. All of the facts are completely spun on their head by Math Matthew here. So please, try to understand that fan theory never trumps the author's word. Ever. Not ever. But Matthew wants you to agree with him. And if you aren't agreeing with him, just remember he said that you're dumb. You're dumb for not believing him. And you are very dumb for believing the author explained his own original character to you in an interview. Here we see that Matthew is really trying to insist that Lucifer is some kind of amazing, special, unique concept in DC Comics, and that he reigns above the concept of whatever Mandrake is. Well, we know that not to be true, because the author tells us that all the is, everything that exists, every concept that exists, is the cosmic armor, and the slipcover also tells us this in Final Crisis. So we have the slipcover, the editorial, the author, and the guidebook, all explaining things in a different flipped manner than what Matthew has insisted. Furthermore, in the newest Lucifer series, we find out that Lucifer has successfully deleted his own concept from the Book of Destiny. And while he was deleted, the presence, Yahweh, also gets deleted too, because it's revealed that the duality concepts that are interlinked between Yahweh and Lucifer, God and the devil, require each other to exist. So Lucifer deletes himself, and along with him goes the concept of God. And the angels are freaking out, basically, because they no longer are powered by the divine inspiration of Yahweh. Yahweh is gone, and so is Lucifer. And that means everything else is still there. The entire flaw of creation and existence continues to linger on. Because Lucifer has nothing to do with every other concept. He is his own contained concept. The concept of the devil and Lucifer is not all there is. But what is all there is? Well, we have just heard the author and the editorial and the guidebook explain that every concept and all that exists is the cosmic armor and all that doesn't exist is Mandrake. So again, Matthew is trying to censor more information from anybody willing to listen to him. Again, please don't listen to him. He's only trying to invert and censor as much information about this comic book as possible. That is his entire goal. So on this next sentiment that Matthew puts out, he says that the hyper story aspect of this comic book that was explained in Superman Beyond was not anything special and they're all part of their own narrative well that's not actually true because once more the hyper story aspect was again explained by grant morrison in an interview with newsarama back in 2009 he says that monitor mind has worked through its own ultimate story and spared nix yotan to be its sole representative and interface with the multiverse matthew has seen this Dozens and dozens of times. We've had many arguments on this, but he will not acknowledge its, its, its own existence. He has done everything in his power to try to censor this from as many eyes as possible. And I'm just not going to let that happen. I'm going to spread this around as much as I can because he spent the last few years trying to invert this and cover it from the eyes of all comic book debaters. The hyper story aspect was taking story which is the cosmic armor and non-story which is mandrake which is again confirmed by steve orlando in this interview where he says that all story is the cosmic armor and non-story no story is mandrake so again now we have two authors and a guidebook and an editorial all explaining something opposite of what matthew isn't trying to exist here don't listen to matthew on this listen to the content creators and the guidebook and the comic book too the hyper story aspect of this is the fact that Overvoid took story and non-story and gave it its own ultimate story. I know that's a little bit confusing, but that's exactly what happened. That's the hyper story aspect of this. It's one step beyond. It's giving story its own story. 
That's what it means. That's what hyperstory means in this context. The hyperstory is the Overvoid took no story Mandrake and all story cosmic armor and gave them their own ultimate story to see which one deserved to continue to linger. Was it Mandrake consuming all there was? Or was it the cosmic armor, which was the flaw of existence? And did that deserve to live? And that's what the Overvoid wanted to see. So it put them both together and made them have their own ultimate hyper story. That's the hyper story that the cosmic armor was talking about. It's not what Matthew was spouting here. In this next part, Matthew claims that the context of this story was not that it was supposed to be above fiction, as some people claim. Remember, Matthew says that you are dumb if you don't listen to him. If you're not going to listen to him, you are dumb. And you're dumb for listening to the content creator explain his own content to you and all the hidden things behind it and all the hidden meanings. Matthew firmly believes here, and he, sta he stated it blatantly, that you're just dumb for listening to the content creator, or me specifically, read out all of these interviews and the guidebook. Here, Grant Morrison states that the original Earth-33 in the Final Crisis version and the Multiversity version, not anything before and not anything after, because the difference between the Grant Morrison canon and everything before and after it are completely different. Authors rewrote this. We're not talking about what happened in Justice League 2018 with Scott Snyder or anything before that. We're not talking about Justice League Incarnate right now. We're talking about the Final Crisis version of Earth-33 and the context of what happened in 2008 Superman Beyond comic books. And that's it. We're not talking about what happened before or after. In that era, Earth-33 was supposed to be this world that we live on. It's supposed to be a place, as he says, where there are no superheroes. Where superheroes are just celluloid, pieces of paper. They are narratives and ideas inscribed into a book. And if you don't believe that the context of this took place exterior fiction itself, well, here's Grant Morrison again live in video form explaining that the entire context of the battle between Mandrak and the Cosmic Armor and the Overvoid and the No Monitors are all that they exist and loom over all of fiction. They are outside and above it. That's their context. That is a superhero. That's what it looks like in our world. It's the closest they can get to reality unless they go on the screen. Past, present, simultaneously. And so that's what Hypertime was. It was a kind of geometric vision that would incorporate the real world and the comic universe and allow every story that was ever told to be real because they are real. You can go and pick them up. So hang on a second. You're telling me that the author went on live video and explained that we and also fiction are included inside of Hypertime and that Matthew is trying to insist the opposite context and not to research this and look into it. Okay, well, I'm happy to report that we have live video as well as the text version of this to debunk Matthew. So what's the point of doing all of this? I really don't understand what the censorship thing is all about. Why insist the opposite of what the mythology actually was explained to be repeatedly? There's no point in doing this further. This entire madness of trying to censor comic book mythology makes no sense to me. Who in their right mind spends their days trying to censor and cover up mythology and stories in comic books and trying to cover up the author and content creators explaining their own content? What is the point of lying about this? There's no point to this. There are so many more things in life that you can be focusing on than trying to cover up information about comic books. The author explained to us in the guidebook that Hypertime is owned and overseen by only one group, and that's the no monitors of Final Crisis, who in turn are literally nothing compared to Mandrake and the Cosmic Armor. So there's the hierarchy for you. I've laid this out so you can see the conspiracy theories going on here. I am not showing you any conspiracy theories on my side. I am literally reading off the author's interviews and playing live video for you 
whereas the other side is making up fan theories and calling you dumb for not listening to him. Liar, liar, plants for hire. It's pants on fire, Patrick. Well, you would know. Liar. You lied! Liar, 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 liar! You're a liar, liar, pants on fire! I think the evidence speaks for itself. Try to do a little bit of investigation on who you're getting your information from because one side is usually lying to you and the other side has made a desperate plea for years and years and years to showcase what the actual truth of the mythology of DC Comics is. Thank you so much for watching.